this assignment is going to be a kind of companion and uh, continuation of the, the rubbing collage that uh, we did last time. Only this time, as we've said in the, the text, uh, you are making your own textures. You are creating your own marks. These are self-made marks and fields of marks that will then become the raw material for a collage, much as you've done the, uh, the rubbing collage of the last assignment. The materials that you can use for your fields of marks are really varied. You can use just about everything. In fact, you can use anything that's in your kit, uh, as long as you don't use it up in this, in this particular assignment. But you can, it's a way to experiment with and sort of get your, your mind around and your hand around the qualities of each of these materials, from the Conti crayon to the Sharpie to the graphite pencils and pens. Uh, in other words, there's a, it's an inventory of your materials that can be tested uh, on a small scale. Uh, with this particular kind of um, of assignment, so it's a it's a way to get to know your materials physically without my telling you exactly how to use them. So, and the good the other good thing about this assignment is that uh, you can use things beyond. In fact, you're encouraged to use uh, you know perhaps the majority of your your drawing instruments uh, and materials and media beyond the kit itself. Not only to save the materials for the kit, but also to to experiment with different sorts of mark making because what what this is is a kind of um, uh, intelligent regression intelligent uh, going back to making somewhere in between and maybe the uh, things that are go that will go through the whole spectrum from say scribbles to doodles they're much more thoughtful than that but at the same time you know th that's not a bad generalized uh, description of the range of the kinds of things you're doing and indeed you're you're doing this because uh, Drawing is more than just longhand photography. You not you wouldn't necessarily use uh, all of these marks in your drawings, but they do become a kind of inventory of expressive handwriting, a kind of muscle memory movement that you're able to use in in each of with each of these these materials. So, so they're entirely up to you. They're invented by you. They become a kind of uh, of quick um, or laboriously geometric. Um, uh, design on your part, and uh, again, the, the materials that you, that you're welcome to use aside from the kit are are things like colored markers, markers that might be uh, fatter and bigger and more powerful than uh, than those in your kit. You can use colors. You're welcome to use colors. I just would ask you to. This is a bit of a, a judgment on your part, but to have the mark and the differences of the marks be the main contrast and not just or entirely, almost strongly, the colors themselves. So you're welcome to use colors. In fact, what I don't have here are uh, children's crayons. That's that's not a bad uh, thing to throw in this mix uh, to do these uh, to do these fields of marks. So things like a sharpie, large and small, colored sharpies. What you have in your kit are the are the graphite pencils and graphite crayons. These will make uh, given the the number from six B to nine B. Uh, you'll have hard and so hard and, and soft, uh, light and dark uh, marks to make. I don't have the, the Conti crayon out, but these are sort of substitutes for the Conti crayon. They happen to be Conti pencils, and they're the very same colors that you have uh, in in your kit, and they can be used to make a kind of uh, soft uh, brown color and earth tone color, uh, as well as black. And what you do have in your kit is a white Conti crayon too, if you had a darker surface or uh, a sort of drawn dark surface that then could be gone over with a with a white pencil. Whatever you find around the house in terms of, uh, of ballpoint pens is fine. So uh, the most important and also what I have here, this is indeed in your kit, uh, you've got some drawing ink here and while you have a brush to use the ink I think you, you might want to save the brush uh, for the future assignment, and what I found that makes uh, fairly strong marks, and I'll get to it in a minute, uh, would be using this eyedropper uh, cap that you have on the bottle of ink, and and moving it round a piece of paper to get a kind of Jackson Pollock drip uh, effect uh, with uh, with drawing ink. And although these you know these are erasers, and, and in drawing you tend to think of the eraser as as what you uh, what you use when you don't want something there, you want to get rid of it. You, you uh, use the eraser, and you have a kneaded eraser and a and a harder eraser, probably more like this in your in your kit. 
uh, use the harder erasers, not the kneaded erasers, which are sort of mops and soft uh, uh, absorbent things. Uh, with these things, especially if you have to cut them and make them make them into, if you can cut them and make them into to sharper edges, they become a kind of mark maker across a field of graphite uh, value, you know, kind of cloudy graphite value. So you can actually cut into what you put down with the pencils, uh, with erasers, so that the, the eraser itself becomes uh, a kind of drawing, mark making instrument. At one end of the kinds of things you can do are um, textures, expanses, I happen to use the word fields of marks, that might be close to scribbling, it might be close to, uh, to a kind of unconscious filling in of very quick, uh, non-conceived and, and self-conscious uh, gestures across the paper, and these, these can become any sorts of qualities you want. Uh, I would, in all of these things, try for a kind of unity. Try for a kind of, you're not, you're not measuring, you're not uh, taking a microscope to it, but if you start out with a given way of working, you know, can you, can you use that atomic or continuous line craziness to make a more or less even field of energy? Because what, what this is, is a kind of aerobics, a kind of, um, of exercise, muscle training exercise, intu intuition training exercise, to get you to think about how drawing isn't just, it can be, and we will do it, certainly, from time to time, but it's not just a rubbing and scrubbing of lights and darks on a paper. In fact, uh, if you were to layer these things more densely, you can see how you can see how they can become a tool for actually giving you light and dark values on a surface. I'm going to sort of gather the darkness up here. We could do a straight value chart, but I'd rather not. And in your fields, you could, if, there's a, if you have a kind of family resemblance in the mark, there's no reason why you can't play a game with some light to dark in the fields that you have. So I've uh, exhausted the black sharpies at this point. Let me just, for, for um, variety's sake, do a, do a powerful uh, blue marker. And just for variety, I'm going to do a more controlled. And you don't have to worry about making a rectangle. You don't have to worry about making things perfect. You don't have to worry about um, there being a shape to the field that you have. These are arbitrary because they're going to be cut out just as you did your, your rubbings. You're going to cut these out, make them big enough. I'm working a little bit too small here, but make them big enough so that you could cut into them with a kind of, of outside shape that then could fit into, then be adjusted, then be recut, then be played with to make a kind of collage of contrasts that would be uh, the final product. Here's a, a graphite pencil. This, this would be a this graphite crayon, rather. This would be a good one with which to build a value structure for a given uh, field. In other words, if you go back and forth repetitively, as you will in your more realistic drawings, you can bear down, or more importantly, just layer, just layer and go over a given light and dark structure so that you've got contrast that can become fairly even and blended and uh, in a real object, descriptive of the object that you're, that you're drawing, light or dark. Now this would be a good opportunity for me to, to show you what would happen perhaps with the eraser. If I make this end somewhat darker here, you could evenly bleed out to a lighter value here. Um, yours will be more of a cubic eraser. It, 
is the same thing. It's a hard uh, plastic eraser, but see what happens. I can do this with the wiggly table. See what happens when you when you really eat into it. There could be a sharper edge here, but you could eat into it to make. This is rather subtle. If I were sharper with the edge of the the eraser, I could get more defined lines. But you get the sense that you could eat into and make another kind of texture with the marks that are that are uh, pushed into the value structure. It also shows uh, an opportunity to use several different kinds of things in one in one field. In other words, yes, you can do a kind of pure energetic field of one particular kind of mark, and probably should you're probably safer to stay for the most part to that kind of thing. But what about you know um, coming through with other kinds of marks on top? So again, you make a kind of homogeneous, fancy word for just evenly <laughs> distributed. Okay, field of stuff. It could then become a kind of energy that gets contrasted to the next shape that is your collage. So although this is not, you know, realistic drawing, which we'll be doing plenty of through the semester, you know, it is a way to get involved in the materials. It's a way to sort of play with your, and, and sort of challenge your perception, see things that you don't normally see Okay. and perhaps uh, uh, work toward a kind of, as the semester goes on, a kind of personal style that would be um, your signature in drawing. I'm going to use the other end of this. is sort of a techno, techno pen here. You have one of these, not particularly this brand, but you have a techno pen in your kit that will give you um, fairly thin fine, solid uh, lines. I mean, my particular handwriting is more like this, as you can see. In fact, if you're at a loss to, I can use the word handwriting, if you're at a loss to, oh, what do I do for a mark? I don't know what he wants. Uh, you know, how do, I, how do I get to something that's unconscious? Well, you just have to sort of try and let yourself go. But one of the ways to sort of get um, a starting texture and and continuous mark would be to, oh, let me do it with this Sharpie because it's going to be easier to see, to start with oh, just your signature and, and, and press it, speed it so that it's just about illegible, okay? Like I, you know, threw snowballs outside in recess in the third grade and had to write a hundred times uh, on the blackboard, you know, I will not throw snowballs in the schoolyard at recess. It just it sort of reminds me of this other thing when I do this. But anyway, this is my uh, maniacal signature. Okay, done again and again and again. Uh, and if you push that, any any kind of phrase, any kind of sentence, any kind of of uh, of script, you know, would become uh, an easy to start with, and not too foreboding or mysterious way, you know, to to build, I mean, this, look at this, look at this kind of, of, of energy, all right? I'm to cut something out, that. Look at what's happening there. And just as in your rubbings, when you do cut these things out, whether it's curvilinear or straight or whatever, that's up to you. Uh, you know, you want to go out to the, you don't want to leave margins and borders on these things. What else have I... Uh, Got here. There's something of the Conti cream, which we only used a little bit of. These are in your kit. These are sticks. This happens to be a pencil that's Conti cream, but it gives you a an earthy brown tone. Okay, that like the charcoal pencil. Excuse me, the graphite pencil might be a a decent material with which to to do a value chart or to do several kinds of densities, okay, Which, I mean, even, even though they're blended, there's still a kind of soft atmospheric mark on the paper, and one of the things that becomes 
obvious when you do this is that different kinds of marks tend to have different kinds of emotional uh, expressions, okay? I mean, you could do something like uh, stippling, which becomes a little bit boring. But if you have patience and a kind of intuitive, quick, non-geometric sense of dis dispersing these things, you could do a whole sort of satanic snowfall of, of black dots. And again, they would be the raw material, the atoms, the, the molecules, the, the bits, the particles, with which you could draw more densities and lighter densities. Okay. And as I've said in the text, uh, as unnatural an act or weirdly an act or uncomfortable an act as it might be, you know, I'm asking you not to draw thingies from the real world. It's not that I, you won't be doing realistic drawing. That's the bulk of the course. But I'm, at this point, more interested in strengthening perception and challenging you to look at raw visual fact as the qualities we can talk about through the semester. As I mentioned in the intro to the materials, uh, you do have this bottle of ink with a stopper. What you want to do is shake up the, the bottle because the, the, the pigment tends to settle at the, bo the bottom in the art st store if it stayed there for a long time. Uh, you're shaking it up as I have done before this uh, shot and you're, you're squeezing it like a kind of medicine eyedropper. And uh, I find that if you put them on the paper, I don't know if any of you know the, the painter Jackson Pollock, but uh, there's a tradition in abstract expressionist art where it drips and smears and sort of unconscious uh, meanderings distributed across the paper become uh, the raw material for uh, very large paintings. And you can see how that relates. And I, I, these are just my marks. I'm not dictating the kind of marks that you do. This is just my kind of mark, and, and what I'm trying to do, what I do think you want to pay attention to is the fact that although they're weirdly different and allegedly messy, there's a kind of distribution that makes sense with the paper. So try for that so it becomes, quote-unquote, a field. These are examples of uh, other sorts of fields of marks that you might uh, uh, refer to when making your own. Now, in, now, these are mine in particular. I have a certain kind of handwriting. I have a certain kind of predisposition to, to do certain scales and densities and, and other sorts of styles. Uh, you're going to find your own, okay? Uh, just as you found different sorts of, of uh, rubbing textures uh, in the environment, so I want you to drag out of yourself, to pull out of yourself, uh, something ranging from many things ranging from doodling to scribbling and everything in between that could become, that will become, the raw material for another collage. Here are a number of uh, completed collages. Uh, just as you've done your rubbing collage, these have taken the, the, the doodles and scribbles and feels that you've done uh, as raw material, cut them out, uh, and put them on uh, a blank piece of paper. Now, uh, the way you cut them out, the way you choose to arrange them is really up to you, uh, but, uh, but by and large, they should be tightly uh, gathered together. In other words, don't have a lot of, if any, uh, vacant space. You want to have this as a work that is contrasted among its various parts, that there are sort of very different things that are somehow designed to, to fit together. Now, this one obviously is, is predominantly a doodling uh, more conscious, more controlled, more uh, decorative, in a sense, uh, collage. But I think it's spectacular in its, its use of uh, a variety of, of different patterns and the way they fit together. Here's an example whereby uh, the artist has used uh, both a kind of doodling, a kind of conscious decoration, and perhaps more strongly, more energetic marks. 
And that might be uh, even more of a challenge than this uh, beautiful first one that we, we had talked about, because I'd, I'd love for you to get a sense of how different qualities contrast and, uh, and, and uh, align with one another. So I think the bigger challenge might be, I'm not saying this is a rule, but the bigger challenge might be to find some way to fit together uh, the gestural, large-scale, um, energetic, and action-packed uh, mark-making along with things that might be more uh, regular and geometric or decorative. So with this one, uh, you've got uh, a kind of uniform set of marks in a, a sense. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of contrast, but at the same time, the, the degree of contrast is a little more peaceful, a little more uh, placid, a little more uh, gentle, shall we say, but there's still uh, a lot of stuff to uh, to reconstruct and, and to put together in a in a coherent design. Uh, I love the fact that that it uses a kind of warm palette. It, it, I'm inviting you to to use different kinds of uh, papers. You don't have them a lot in your kit. You might have your tone paper. I wouldn't use a lot of it in this stuff, which is kind of brown. Uh, but paper bag paper, uh, wrapping paper, grid paper, even uh, although that's not uh, evident here, even a uh, good old-fashioned black and white newspaper uh, print paper would be would be very good. So this is a, a gentler calligraphic, uh, more scribble-oriented uh, collage. Well, one of the one of the uh, attributes of this one here is the is the value contrast. You see that big, almost black form floating up above. Um, I tend to to think that those sorts of things should be spread a little bit. Uh, evenly throughout the collage, but, but nonetheless, it's a good example of how deep and dark uh, you can get. One of the, one of the um, aspects of contrast in any of these things is, is value, the good old-fashioned word that means in art lingo, uh, lightness and darkness. So don't be afraid to, to really press the graphite crayon that you have. You have a 9B graphite crayon, which can give you, uh, with some pressure and, and layering, a fairly dark contrast. This final example is perhaps one of the more energetic and, and uh, chaotic ones that we've, we've seen so far. It's dense, it's dark, it's got a lot, it's light, it's got a lot of contrast in terms of value. And uh, I believe, if you look closely, that uh, much of the, the darker areas are done with uh, ink and brush. I had shown you in a demo how to use the eyedropper uh, to give a kind of Jackson Pollock calligraphy across the, across the field of marks. But, if you wish to use your brush, there's no there's no reason why you can't. Just make sure that you've uh, you've washed it out uh, thoroughly and not had any ink on it uh, to dry through the semester, because we're going to be using it with the ink toward the end of the semester. And nevertheless, I really like the the sort of family of shapes in this one too. They all have a kind of organic feel to them, and the distribution of them it doesn't seem to be self-conscious. It seems to be something that might have flowed from nature. You might find these textures in nature. And I think if you look closely on the, the lower right-hand side and bottom, there, there's an example of what I talked about as the eraser as drawing mark. In other words, the harder eraser through that brownish Conti crayon color you know, seems to leave ghostly traces of, um, of mark. Uh, 